Hello, and welcome to the MindFish.com series on hard math questions on the SAT. In this series, we're going to be taking you through some of the hardest questions in the uh, official SAT study guide, and I strongly recommend, that no matter who you study with for the SAT, that you have this book. Um, it has the most authentic set of questions, 10 real tests. So what I'm going to be doing is taking you through some of the hardest math questions in these tests so that um, you have the ability to understand how to do them when you take the SAT for real. Because one thing this book doesn't do is provide great explanations for the answers. It does give you the answers, but it doesn't tell you why they're in fact correct. So this question here is on page 457. Uh, it's problem number 20. Now keep in mind, on the SAT math, the questions do get harder in order, uh, do get more difficult as they get later into a section. So question 20, we would expect this to be a hard question. And that's an important thing for you to understand. The questions at the end will always be more difficult than the SAT. So some of the things I have underlined here are first coordinate plane. I did that because that tells me this is a coordinate geometry question. Second, I underlined perpendicular. I underlined these four points. And then I underlined what is t. So essentially what I've done here is I've pointed out what is important in this problem. It's important that we're looking at two lines that are perpendicular. One line goes through these points. One line goes through these points. And we're looking for t. So it's always really important that you understand what we're looking for and what they've told us. So before I get into the, the uh, specific solution for this question, I want to point out that on almost all hard questions, if you don't know exactly what to do, you should be able to estimate and come up with a reasonable solution. So if we draw a coordinate axis, and we first label our two points 0, 0, which is the origin, and the point 2, 1. Now I want to be very careful to draw my units as accurately as possible. That way I'm going to get a very accurate representation for the lines in the problem. And you can see that up my straight line drawing it needs a little bit of help here. Now the next point goes through the point 2, 1, and it's perpendicular. So if it's perpendicular, it would look something like that. And actually, I, I drew that kind of poor. I would probably say that that is a little bit better representation. And I apologize that I'm not as good at drawing perpendicular lines as I would be on paper, but you kind of get the idea. So now, well, they're asking us what is the y value when the x value is 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like somewhere between 4 and 5. Now coming over here, I now know for sure that I'm not going to be willing to pick any of these three answers. And given my estimate, if I had drawn it a little bit better, we could see that the best approximation for our answer is 5. But again, if I drew it just a little bit more accurate, got my perpendicular line a little bit more centered, I probably would have seen an exact answer of 5. Okay, so what I'm pointing out here is that even though we may not have known how to do the perpendicular slope calculation, we were able to get a very accurate estimate with a very simple drawing in the coordinate geometry plane. Now to do this question correctly, we have to first identify the slope between two points. So anytime you get a question that is difficult, you want to start out by writing the equation down. So we're going to write down slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now we can see how to do the slope for that line. So the slope for that line is going to be 1 minus 0, which is 1, over 2 minus 0, which is 2. And that's 1 half. And that's reasonable given our, our slope of this line right here. It's positive, but it's not quite 1. Now, the perpendicular slope, so basically the perpendicular slope to this slope is going to be negative 2. And I get that by flipping it, taking the reciprocal, so 2 over 1, and then negating it aka the opposite reciprocal. Now this has to be equal to the change in y over change in x for these two points. So change in y is going to be t minus 1 and change in x is going to be 0 minus 2. And now I just need to solve this equation. So if I cross multiply, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 is going to be t minus 1 and so t is going to equal 5. And that's consistent with my estimate. So remember, you may not know exactly how to do the problem, aka the perpendicular slope approach, but there was an estimation approach that could have gotten you there. Mindfish.com will help you ace the SAT. Practice for the test with SAT Quest, our online SAT quiz game with over 1,500 practice questions. Learn difficult SAT vocabulary words with short, funny, and memorable vocab clips on video vocab. We've got test prep pros from Harvard and Stanford standing by to give you the test prep guidance that you need. 
Master every concept on the test with SAT videos. Mindfish.com, your resource for all you need to ace the test.